Now comes the key notion. And for discrete groups, this is something very intuitive, so you'll really understand it. For continuous groups, as you'll find out, it's a little bit harder to visualize. So reduced state space says I'm working too hard. So yeah, I don't want to list these three orbits as separate orbits. I just want to list it only one time. The set of group orbits partitions a space M quotiented by the symmetry. So now that's you know, mathematical notation. You might not like it, but what will happen is that M uh, will be written as a sum of something I'll call fundamental domain. Union is the mapping of the domain, the first element all the way to the dimension of the group, order of the group M. So we will now find an explicit construction which says that instead of working in a big space, I can work in a smaller space which in this case will turn out to be just a slice of a pizza. It won't be very hard to understand at all. If we know the dynamics in reduced space, we know it in the full space. So technical word is the reconstruction equations. It will turn out that reduced dynamics will be much simpler than the dynamics in a full space. You know, it's kaleidoscope effect. If you look at the full space, you'll get lots of beautiful pictures because whenever you have something because you have six operations on that something, you'll get this six symmetric pictures and they all look very beautiful. But actually that's stupid. You just need one of these pictures. So now I'll teach you how to do the one of these pictures and that'll be the reduced space. Together I need to do a little bit more. See what we have done so far, it was all about abstract group operations and the group operations on a full state space, etc. But the thing will turn out to be very important for us are the symmetries of solutions. And that's sort of you know, crucial insight. You have to understand that when you have a symmetry of equations of motion, that does not mean that the solutions are symmetric. So in condensed matter that's called symmetry breaking, etc. Solutions don't know about a symmetry. So generic solution of a system with symmetry is fully asymmetric. So if I use my Newton's laws for some system or both, the law for that system might be such that I have a nice symmetry. Could be rotational, could be some flip symmetry, etc. But if I start someplace in a state space, phase space in that case, and I evolve the system, the solution has no symmetry generically. And that you know, the turbulence is the simplest thing. You're in a pipe, here is a pipe. And you're looking at turbulent thing happening there. And yeah, looks turbulent, means it's not symmetric. You look up in the clouds, they don't look reflection symmetric, even though your equations might be reflection symmetric or rotation symmetric. Every cloud looks different, unique, and you cannot put them on top of each other. So when you apply the symmetry group, you'll get, for example, just six clouds, but they, they'll be different. You know, there are lots of words in uh, literature for this thing. So I'll try to use what makes sem simpler sense. I'll say a solution has a symmetry. I will not call it isotropy or normalizer or stabilizer. There'll be a group for each compact solution P for all elements in the group associated with a given solution. So for example, symmetry of this solution is flipping it, and symmetry of this solution is rotating by one third cyclic symmetry. So there's a two or three elements that belong to the symmetry of the thing. G applied to any point in this set. If you have an orbit, you just give it a name. It's a subset of the full state space. With the property that G of X is not X, it doesn't have any fixed points on the group operation for G not equal E. What that means is that when I apply my symmetry subgroup, each point moves, none of them are fixed. So that's the symmetry of the solution.